So let's talk about some post-install SQL configuration options we might want to change. I'm going to start by opening up the uh, SSMS and connecting to my server that way. Now, a lot of these settings can be changed either in the uh, with the uh, SQL code uh, in a query or in the GUI. So we're going to kind of take a look at both a little bit here. So I'm going to click Connect to connect to my server. And to get to my configuration options in uh, my SSMS, I'm going to right-click on my server instance that I'm connected to and go to Properties. Now, if we're looking for hard and fast rules that this way is always the way it should be done, you're going to have a hard time finding them. So a lot of these options we're going to talk about, it's going to vary based on you know, the correct settings, the best settings for you are going to vary based on your hardware, whether you're in physical or virtual, what your environment is like. So I'm going to show you where the settings are, and we're going to go over some of them. And finding out the right one might honestly be a little bit of a matter of trial and error. And then looking at your system performance, which we're going to talk about in a couple of subsequent videos. So... On the general page here, you see some general information. There's not really any settings here. On the memory page is where we start having uh, some settings that we can manipulate. So a couple of things I want to point out to you here. Server memory options. Minimum server memory. This is memory that won't be released back to the operating system. So this is memory that will be dedicated to SQL Server. So let's say if I set this at a gigabyte of RAM then what happens is when my SQL server needs the memory, the operating system will allocate it. And then if SQL no longer needs it, it will release it back to the operating system. Well, when I set a minimum server memory, it will release back down to that minimum level. It won't release more than that. So that leaves memory dedicated just to the SQL server. Now, the flip side of this is the maximum server memory. What's the most I will let the SQL server run? Now, remember in a previous video, we said you're probably going to want to leave SQL on a pretty much a dedicated server. However, so there shouldn't be memory contention between the SQL server and other applications running if you do that. But there, the SQL server can use a ton of memory so much so that it'll actually starve the operating system. So you might want to set your maximum server memory. So let's say you had a 64 gig uh, server with 64 gigs of RAM. You might want to say, you know, the SQL server can't make take more than like 62 to leave a couple of gigs free for uh, the operating system all the time. Now, and your next screen here is your processors, which deals with processor affinity, maximum worker thresholds. One other thing to point out to you is down here you'll see this option, Configured Values, Running Values. Running Values is what it's actually using at the moment. This will be a little bit better here on the memory. If I go to Memory and Running Values, it will show you what we're actually using at the moment. So at the moment we're using you know, 16 meg of memory and we have no databases running and no clients connected. So we've got really nothing going on here at the moment. But that'll show you what's actually being used. And then the configured values is what you've set. Uh, let's go to Connections. Here you'll see the maximum number of concurrent connections allowed. And by default, that's set to unlimited. Now, you may want to limit that from time to time. You might want to say, you know what, we, we don't want to have more than 500 people in this SQL server at any given moment. And this is where you would go to limit that. The zero obviously means unlimited. In your database settings, one thing I want to point out to you here is the backup compression. So backup compression, when you go to back up your database, if you compress the data before you back it up, you will save a lot of space. The downside of it is that while you save space, you will lose a lot of processor time in that uh, backup because it's having to compress all the data before it saves it. So if you're space limited, then it makes sense to maybe go ahead and do that. However, if you are processor limited, if you notice your processor is running you know, pretty actively, you might not want to take that extra processor time.
The other thing to be aware of down here is your data uh, location, your logs location, your backup location. Ideally, you would want all three of those on different physical devices. So, SANS, rig, whatever, you want them on different physical devices so that they're not competing. Your data backup and log aren't competing for disk time. Under your advanced tab, you have a whole bunch of other settings. And these are including settings for network packet size, parallelism, miscellaneous settings. So a lot of settings here that you might want to be aware of and you might need to fine tune depending on uh, depending on your environment. Now there's one other setting that I want to show you how to do and we're going to do this using a query. So we're going to click on new query and this is going to be the uh, direct administration connection, the uh, DAC that we created a firewall rule entry for a little bit earlier. When you are configuring options from the SQL query, the tool you're going to use a lot is SP configure. I'm going to do SP configure and it's SP and I just skipped it underscore configure all one word. SP is short for stored procedure. So we're going to configure, then we're going to put the name of the setting in quotes, if I can hit the right key, remote admin connections. And then we're going to change that value from a zero to a one. Zero means no, one means yes. You say go because we wanted to do it, and then we're going to do the reconfigure. Now, this SP configure will change the setting, but it doesn't take effect until we actually reconfigure it. In fact, when we execute this, we're going to see this in our results. The configuration option remote admin connections changed from 1 to 0. Run the reconfigure statement to install. Well, we don't have to do that because we just ran the reconfigure statement. So this displays as soon as this first line, well, as soon as the second line runs. Okay. So. That gives you an idea of where some of the settings that you may need to manipulate to get optimum performance out of your SQL Server are located at. Now, I didn't change any of them, again, because the right answer, what the best configuration for you and for your environment is, is going to vary quite a bit. So one of the ways we figure out what needs to change is by monitoring system performance over time. And there are a handful of tools that we can use to uh, do that. One of the best may be being Performance Monitor, which is a Windows Server tool that will allow us to monitor performance counters for our hardware, for different applications, including a bunch of ones for SQL Server. So that might be some, or that'll be something that you'll want to look at. We're going to cover that in another video.